The definition of ability, a talent, skill, or proficiency in a particular area. Account her ability. The journey to success is never easy. These women come to share their story to inspire, motivate, and encourage you to focus, believe, and tap into your God-given abilities, and you too will succeed. Welcome to the Account Her Ability Show, hosted by Trey Kearney. Dr. D.C. Marshall, Dr. Dr. D.C. Marshall is a sought after international speaker, author, certified coach, and TV lifestyle expert. D.C. Marshall is the CEO of DCMarshall.com Brands, which includes Yummy Life Coaching, Diverse and Engaged, and Girlfriends Pray. She's a game changer, power player, fire starter, mover and shaker, a Wall Street alumni, former corporate executive and leadership chain trainer for Fortune 500 companies, including Merrill Lynch, Prudential Securities, Moody's Investor Services, Johnson & Johnson, and the New York Times, a Capitol Hill go-to woman for leaders, women of Congress called on D to go convene women's initiatives, gather local women's leaders, strategically plan the mobilization of women and provide insight on women's empowerment and development. Welcome, D. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to see you. Listen, I'm always happy to see you because I know I got, listen, you know, I got my pen and my paper because I know I'm about to learn something and I might get gut punched myself, but it's okay. I might need it. Oh my goodness. I met Dee. Let me just give a little backstory. I was going through a um, toxic relationship, very toxic relationship. I was in for 13 years and I was lost in my life and I didn't know where to go. And a friend of mine named Susie, and I love Susie to death because Susie just don't know how much she, sometimes God sent people to send people. And she said, she knew I was going through it. I was pregnant. I had, was pregnant with Jermaine. And she said, you need to get on Girlfriend's Pray. And I said, well, what is that? She said, it's a call. Girlfriends pray. Get on. They pray every morning at 7 a.m. and at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I said, I ain't getting on no call praying for nobody. She said, no, you don't pray. You listen. And they pray. They have intercessors, which let me just say this, too. I didn't know what an intercessor was. So sometimes people need to know that if you just because you don't know something doesn't make you ignorant or dumb. You just need to ask questions. Yes. So her D come on at the end of the prayer. This little this. This loud voice, not loud in a bad way, but loud in an authoritative way, said, I have a program called Life Camp if you want to get your life together. And <laughs> I teach you spiritual growth and personal development. And I was like, oh, okay. So I never knew the language of life coach either. So you said, you know, you can go on and you can sign up. Everything that people were like, how much is it? And you like, everything's on the website. And then I said to myself, I'm not paying to talk to this lady. And then you said, I don't need your money. I got businesses. This is not for you. For me, this is for you. And I said, oh, that's my girl. That That's her right there. You also said, um, a lot of people were saying, you said you can't afford to give up something. Give up that coffee that you're going to Dunkin' Donuts and paying for three cups a day. Add that up in a month and you can afford a coach. So ever since then, I just been rocking with you. So I want you to tell everybody a little bit about your background, how you were raised. Um, talk a little bit about your mother and your father. I always ask my guests this so people can get a blueprint of where you came from. Yeah. Oh, this is a good question. I've never asked about this question, which is there's a story and nobody ever asked me about my mother and my father. Nobody. So first of all, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here and I'm so glad God assigned us um, to each other in the season and the time, um, you know, you validate the work that God put in me. So I'm so grateful. I stepped up to do work that would be a blessing um, to you. I was really just an instrument. It was really God. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for always the story that you share. I love the story that you share. I like when you talk about me, like, I ain't giving her all my money. I love that. So, um, and I love that about you, just that you're really uh, transparent and, and, and such in the way that you do what you do. So I am the product of a single parent, um, a single mom who had two children by the time she graduated high school. Yep. So my mom was a teen mom. Yep. For all the people who put, you know, uh, look down on the teen moms. I'm the product of a teen mother who had two children. It was my brother, uh, my brother and I, I'm the oldest of two children. We were two years apart. I lost my brother in a car accident 
when he was 21 and he was 23 many years ago. His wow. name was Sly. And so sometimes I use Sly or where some people know me as Charlie Marsh. Uh, Charlie Marsh is a businesswoman. Um, and so Charlie is a play on my middle name. And my brother's name was Charles, Charlie. And my uncle would call him Charlie. So the Charlie Marsh and me. So um, I'm that I'm a product of that. My father, a teen father, um, but a really uh, unfortunate past. So my father spent most of my childhood in prison for allegedly, uh, yes, uh, shooting a police officer. So, yeah. So my mom. Yeah. 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 So nobody ever asked me. I'm happy to tell. Yeah. Yeah. So my mom, so yeah, single parent household. And so, um, but I'll tell you about my dad and my mom. So I was born in a small town on the Eastern shore of Maryland. I've lived in Jersey all my life uh, since I was four, but Eastern shore of Maryland, tiny little town um, where there's probably, I think five, six traffic lights in this, in the town. Um, they're uh, 30% um, African-American, like the median house- household income is probably like $33,000, dollars $40,000. Um, and I still have some of my family there. So my mother's family and my father's family are both there. Um, and so, yeah, so about my mom and my dad, my mother and I are very close and we have been for forever. My little mommy, uh, Debo, a lot of people know my mom. Now my dad, so um, my father, just in terms of my thoughts about my father, and the, the one thing that I'll share to frame up the thoughts about my father is I blame him for nothing. I forgive him for everything. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I blame him for nothing. I forgive him for everything. Mm. And so that captures my feeling about my father and being able to get to and be in a a fair place about being a daddyless daughter with a father, right? So mm. that so I blame him for nothing. No blame, and I forgive him. Why? Because he was a he was a, a a teenage dad who did not have a father. Who again? Look at the pathology. Look at the sort of the um, the generational trend. His mother was a teenage mom who had seven children. Her oh. first when she was sixteen, um, th- two and three. Yep, sips tea. Two, two or three fathers. This is my grandmother. God rest her soul. My grandma. My grandma Eve. Um, and so he was a product of that. His mother did not raise him. Um, he went, his, uh, aunt raised him Wow. because again, when you are a young teenage mom and you have all the kids, you know how the sisters take kids. Cause you've got a teenage mom. I'm a product of that. Wow. And, and so my, my, so my family is mostly Maryland, New York. Now m- most everybody left. New York, and then moved back to Maryland. But like, so my fam, Bronx, New York, 161st, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. Grand Concourse, that would be, yes. Mm. So, but I'm a, so I'm a product of that. So I blame him for nothing, but forgive him for everything because he was not um, a dad to me. He was a father. He didn't know how to be a father. He, again, the whole background is a typical young black boy girl meets girl in high school pregnant he spends i don't even know i can't even remember like how long he spent in prison for shooting that police officer in fact i need to really circle back and ask my mom again about the story but and then as an adult i love that i love that you're gonna yeah. Tell me that. yeah yeah i mean like so my dad and i my father and i have a relationship had a relationship as an adult so we had a relationship and then, and so I'm going to try not to get uh, super emotional. So my father and I had a relationship as an adult. And um, so I'll tell you one uh, plot twist or, or one moment in um, with my dad is when my brother left New Jersey, my mom's house to go to stay with my father in New York. 
it was there he lost his life oh. so he was there and he and and yes he was killed in a car crash he was a passenger he i think he was a passenger in the in the car crash and so the driver and my brother died and the oh. guy in the back seat he lived for i think two months after it was horrible and then I think he died. Yeah. Yep. My mother had to, I don't mean to bring this into this conversation, but this is my background. Okay. Okay. So my mother and I, um, you know, I always tell this story about, I don't know that I had an opportunity to grieve because I just saw like moms cannot bury children. It's just, it's just mothers can't. And so my mom and I had to literally go to the morgue to identify my brother and she wouldn't let me go in so i'm 23 he's 21 she had to go in because my father had gone out of town so my brother lived at at that time as a 21 year old he went to live with my father so he wouldn't be homeless basically and um and my grandmother my paternal grandmother lived in in this is 161st and grand concourse and my father 161st and grand and grand concourse bronx And so my brother went to live with my dad, Um, my father. Dad doesn't feel quite appropriate um, for me. That's just not where I am, my father. And, and yeah, and and my mom got the call uh, early on a Saturday morning. And then it was just bad. It was my grandmother called screaming my father. So my father had left town, went out, went away for the weekend. I think he gave, I mean, he connected with my brother, maybe gave him some money or something. I don't, I don't know if, how I remember that. But um, so my father wasn't around to go and view my brother. And so that's my, so I'm a product of a teen mom. I love my mom. My mom did well. My yeah. mom did extremely well as a mother and of a, as a single mom growing up. And I'll tell you why. And then, um, I'll certainly, yeah. So I'll tell you why my mom did well. And then I'll, I'll share a little bit even about my, my father. Um, my mom did well and here's how and why I believe that I don't have a story I thank God yes. of drugs in my home. I don't have a story of molestation because my mother's boyfriend was inappropriate. I don't have that story. Right. My mother never had to have a lived in boyfriend. Hmm. And so from those two and three measures, my mom did well. And, and so um, I never knew we were poor. So my mom did well. I never, we never wanted for anything. Um, we, we had Christmases and birthdays. And so, you know, you don't know until you're an adult, like, oh, wait, we have no money. I didn't know that. We, had a, <laughs> we were clean. You know, we had a roof over our heads. So I'm a product of a single, a single mom. And my mom did well on the strength of a teenage mom. It could have went another way. So yeah. if you ever heard me really pray the prayer and sing the song, like this could have went another way. This could have went another way because what I also realized, Trey, and I know you'll appreciate this, is many years ago when I took, um, for graduate school, I took a psychology course and it blew my mind because I learned about this thing um, in terms of like mental um, mental instability, or let's just say, yeah, mental wellness. And then there's the opposite is mental illness, right? So I learned the distinction between mental wellness and mental illness, illness, and mental illness is, um, categorized by two things. And the two things are intensity and duration. Hmm. Meaning, Meaning whenever you are presenting for something like in, in therapy and the psychology world, they stay presenting. Meaning if I have something that is showing up in my life, let's just say like depression, right? It doesn't look like depression and it may not be depression. So let's just say you and I on a we work together and on Monday, it's time to go to work. You I'm like, Trey, I don't know if I'm going to go into work today. I don't really feel, you know, like, and you're like, girl, I'm not going either. I don't feel good today either. And then uh, comes Tuesday and I'm like, yeah, Trey, I don't think I'm going in today. And you're like, oh, you know, I think I'm going to pull together. I probably go late, but yeah, I'm going. And then Wednesday, uh, you know, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going today. 
you know, I'm not feeling good. And by, by Thursday, Friday, I may not even be answering the phone, but I didn't go into work all week. You went by day two, three, right? And so my blue Monday, right? I wasn't feeling like it on Monday. Um, if I'm still feeling that by Friday and now I'm not answering the phone, now we're looking at intensity and duration. Wow. Before I am presenting for mental illness, which would be called depression. So, yeah. right, I'm not the therapist here, but I just know I just know stuff. I just know a little bit. I don't know a lot about a lot of things. I, I promise you there's so much. I'm completely clueless. But from a duality perspective, I just understand that um, I believe it's 10 days, seven, 10 days of is the duration that I have to be in that window of feeling like I just I don't feel like it today right. like by day 10 and then the then the intensity so day 10 is duration and intensity so why did I tell you that story I was going to share somebody something with you that. somebody is on day 10 somebody is on day 10 yeah 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 so so yeah I was going somewhere with the story um holy spirit step in right now Yes. And, uh, oh, you know what it was? Um, yeah, I think I was going, I was telling the story about like, I didn't really have the opportunity maybe some more or something like that. I think I was going there. Yes. And because just watching my mom and because what I know uh, is parents burying children is different from siblings losing siblings. Hmm. Even though it's bad, it's just the natural progress, the natural order of things. Parents are not supposed to bury kids. So if a parent loses a child, you can pretty much expect that they'll, they'll, they're not going to be forever well at a hundred percent Wow. all for the rest of their lives. So even though like in my mind, I think about my mom and she's having a low day. And I always wonder if my mom, like, you know, she struggles a little bit with depression. It would be understandable because as a parent had to, she had to bury a, bury a child. Wow. And so her thought process process different from mine as well as my father. So I was going to go back to the story of my father. I think my father even, um, and it was actually my aunt, my father's sister who told me she said, I think your dad died when mom, when, when mom died, meaning when she said to me, I think your father died, meaning, meaning mentally, physically when, when grandma, and now mind you, I have two grandmothers. I have the mother who is the, the mother who raised him is my aunt, but my, I call her grandma because that would be disrespectful for me to call her anything else. And then his biological mo mother died also. And so my aunt is saying, I think he died when, when she died, when mom may die. When she wow. said that to me, uh, wait, it gets, it gets more interesting. When she said that to me, in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I think my dad died when my brother past wow. it wasn't just my mom because fathers burying sons and the guilt of not being there and I don't know how I know knew know this or if he mentioned it if I think he might he may have mentioned it because I don't know how I would know this whatever demons were on him his fear I think in his mind played out that they were transferred to him to his son oh wow and i wow that's... you see how everybody has their own... yes that we're talking about we're talking about other people we're not even talking about me this is not even about me and my story do you see right. like the, di the family stuff and so when parents are but you know bearing children and kind of what's past so i was like oh my god i think i could see how he just I could see how mentally a father not being there and whoever spoke negative over my father, my father now guilty because, oh my God, that was placed on my son. Right. So anyway, wow. that's, I'm a, so I'm a product of, yep. Wow. And, and, and not like silver spoon. Not right. like some people, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People don't know it. This is why I always ask all my guests, like, where did you come from? Like, you didn't just pop up in this space of being successful in every area. Like there's something that um, 
built you up to this. God put you through, let you go yeah. through things in order for you to be who you are to help other people. And you say something which takes us right back to your story. Um, people always compliment you on your shoes or your hair, or your clothes. You say, don't ask me about my shoes. Ask me about my walk. Why is that so important to you? Because I feel like I never want to be um, just about external, number one. Number two, because there's a story. Um, and then number three, there's there's my my heart and like my you know, my, what I value. And so I just, as much as I like shoes, like I don't want to be minimized and I don't want to be framed in shoes. It's it, right. And I'll go to number four. What's also important to me is because I'm clear why I'm here. I'm not here to look cute. Right. Now, thank God I was able to pull it together today because I don't always look like this. Right. Some days, you know, you get older and you start like, oh, Lord, yeah, no. Oh, gosh, aging and stuff. So but the but the fifth reason is because I'm here for a purpose. And so my purpose in which God sent me here was not about my shoes. Now, God did tell me he was going to use my shoes. He told me that I'm clear. But so I never when I say ask me about my don't ask me about my shoes, ask me about my walk, meaning just ask something more meaning. Ask an, ask another question. Right. You know, like in addition to where'd you get your shoes? Do you have anything else for me? Because right. also it speaks to my desire to be used by God. It, it speaks to my interest, mm -hmm. um, my interest to help other women elevate. So like, ask me something that I could really support you with because I'm here. And so, you know, when I would say that it was when I was speaking a ton on the road and I knew people would come up and they start asking me about my shoes. Um, I, I think, or, or I probably just felt that. Right. So, right. And yeah. I, I, love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, like, listen, you say this to every woman you meet, and I've learned this from you. I've learned a lot from you. One thing you taught me too, so much I want to talk about, but you um, say every morning, first of all, every morning I look to see what conversation you're having with God because you post and you put your thing. And I'm like, let me be nosy and infringe or on D in God's conversation in case, you know, some people don't know how to have a conversation with God. So yes. I'm eavesdropping on your conversations with God. Just, just know that there's a whole bunch of people eavesdropping on those conversations. Yes. But yes. you always say to women, when you approach us or when we get an email, you say, good morning, gorgeous, good afternoon, greatness. Yep. Why do you address us in that manner? Because so many of us, we, hi, you know, we, but you make sure, and I've learned when I walk in rooms with you, you strategically are a person who brings out the greatness in people. So every woman that you could go, hello, greatness, tell, just speak on just the way you address people. Yes, yes. Because you know what, one part of it was, as I grew in my spiritual walk, um, I think that was a natural outcome of growth in walk. Why? Because the fruit of the spirit, like the evidence that you have been with a man and the man's name is God, well, the fruit of that would be love, patience, kindness, right? So the fruit of the spirit. So there's evidence. So it's a natural, if you just show up in love and kindness, um, in spite of, where you are, it, there is, that's evidence. The fruit is evident. And you talk a lot about fruit and you, you know, you always bless me with just, just, you know, keeping score if there was such a thing. But so one part of it is because I think it's a natural outcome of my own work in spiritual growth, not even just personal development, but like spiritual growth, it was a very natural thing. Another reason why is because um, I learned the power of death and life is in the power of the tongue. And I learned that whatever you say out of your mouth, it comes back to mm. you. In fact, whatever you say out of your mouth in secret or out loud oh. about Don't start. Her or him, I'm just saying. So what happens is if you can imagine right now, imagine my words out of my mouth right now are carrying a color code, let's just say a cloud of smoke. And the cloud of smoke 
is let's just call it let's say blue like my like my top right so the words out of my mouth just imagine there's smoke coming out this blue smoke hmm. let's just call it let's just say blue because that's the color of the shirt that i'm wearing and it's positive right yes. and so when i speak out of my mouth positive tiny morsels of this blue cloud this blue smoke it falls back and down here to my belly. Let's imagine um, the smoke turns a certain color. Let's just call it red. When I start speaking negative about other people, let's just say there's red smoke. So let's just say, you know, Trey, good morning, gorgeous. Good morning, greatness. You're amazing. And I appreciate, you know, the work that you do and this, that, and the other. And, but Trey, did you see so-and-so social media, um, blah, blah, blah. And she, she crazy. Mm. Oh, wait, the smoke now turned red and crazy just. And so, so, so the word of the Lord says death and life is in power of the tongue and those who will eat the fruit of it, you know, so you eat your words. And so, so you have to be very mindful, um, of your words. Um, there's a, um, a quote, it says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It will not return without producing a result. It will not return without doing what I sent it to accomplish. So there is so much power in your word. In fact, our lives become what they are as a result of our thoughts and our words. So hmm. The thoughts are seeds and war words are fertilized. So you have to be very mindful. So let me come back to gorgeous and greatness. So when I say gorgeous and greatness, it's like if I walk in a room and I know these people don't like me, they don't care for me, but I don't really, I don't, I don't really care. I just, I'm going to show up how I am. And I am always going to be um, acting as if God is ear hustling on my conversation. Why? Because it's not even about you. It's about me and God. So guess what I'm not going to do? What, guess what, guess what um, my alter ego is not, not about to do? Get in my way and block my blessing. I'm going to show up as a daughter of the king. I'm going to show up in excellence, or at least I'm going to try, right? Nobody's perfect, but I'm going to try to show up in excellence. And so I'm going to try to be kind, and I'm, I am acting as if there's a third party in my conversation. So much so, uh, even if you would keep my secret until, listen, until the end of the earth, nope, God is ear hustling. And so let me say something twisted about somebody else. I am, again, I'm eating those words and I become that. So I'm very mindful thoughts become things that we have an opportunity. Uh, we have actually an opportunity to shift the atmosphere, to shift the room. So you can walk in a room and you want to walk in like excellent. You yes. don't want to walk in fabulous. No, there's a difference between fabulous and, and excellence, fabulous and greatness. Fabulous is who you are pretending to be. Greatness is who you are called to be. So I want to be out, you know, I don't want to just be fabulous. I want to be greatness, right? And so, so, so learning and just having it naturally come out of me, gorgeous and greatness, it just does so much to set an intention to, um, to move into positive, into positive frequency. Do you, should I push it? Should I push it? Because I could push it. So there are 22 human emotions and seven of the human emotions are positive and the rest are negative. Hmm. And so how uh, emotions work is emotions put you on a frequency. You're either going to be on a positive frequency or a negative frequency. Why should that matter? When you are on a positive frequency in, in terms of your emotion, you are in a positive position and highest frequency to manifest. That hmm. is to attract to you what it is that you desire and what it is that you ain't even work for there's a difference between manifesting and efforting so manifesting is you just attracted that to you right yeah so if some of y'all go some of y'all say she didn't even work for that yeah oh, okay well that's great that would be in my manifesting bucket so i'll take it i'm not offended if you say she didn't even work for that or did she what did she do to deserve that i didn't do nothing i was just positive yeah so let's come back so i'm framing this up so greatness and gorgeous it's positive that you are sowing in the atmosphere. You're sowing it in the earth. You're in the highest frequency, right? Positive, uh, uh, great, uh, let me see. It's gratitude, joy, 
is the highest frequency. So highest emotion, highest frequency. So you want to put that out so you can attract that back. Yes. Put it out, attract it back. So I know that's a long-winded answer to oh, gorgeousness good. and greatness, but for years, and and there was a time when I prayed, I just said, you know, and my name is attached to, my name is associated with greatness. Yes. My name is, so. and what I meant by that, so some people would think, you know, I'm talking about myself and I'm not. I'm really just talking about whoever comes into my sphere their greatness. So I'm already, baby, I'm praying and forecasting my space. I am forecasting and projecting and seeding. I am planting and I'm sowing. If you come into my space, your greatness. Because mm. I already, act. so that's how, how, how do you think I could love on you forever? You always show up. And why are you forever gorgeous in greatness? Because that's not necessarily, that's not about me, but it is about my conversation with the Lord and what I've seeded and what I've planted and what I'm believing for and what I am invited to do by God. I was invited. He says, um, ask whatever it is that you wish. You have not because you ask not. Hmm. Come boldly before the throne. Do not give up your confidence in me. And so, you know, pretty much, the universe is open. So however you want to receive it, just put it out. Because my dad owns everything. You notice that my dad, my Abba father, my, my heavenly father owns everything. My mm. father, my earthly father didn't own anything. My oh. heavenly father owns everything. My earthly father owned nothing. I'm not worried about the inheritance. I am, mm. I am resolving and reconcil reconciling my inheritance from my earthly father who didn't have anything because my Abba father said, I got it. I got him. In fact, you're my daughter, says Psalm 139. My eyes saw your unformed body when you were made in a secret place hmm. and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then the Lord talks about in Jeremiah 29, 11, my plan is not to harm you. I have a plan for you. The moment he said my plan, I was like, oh, you got a plan. Oh, you got a plan. <laughs> so greatness is see greatness and gorgeous is just being very in, in some way thoughtful and intentional but in another way it's natural and that's just in my dna so i'm not thinking about it my natural greeting is if you are female gorgeous and if you are not if you're a male uh greatness uh greatness yes right? yes i see it all the time and this and I just want women to understand because so many women are uncomfortable with themselves. And there's another thing that you say, they're so uncomfortable with themselves. So when a woman like you walks up and say, hello, greatness, they thinking what? Hello, gorgeous. What? Like, yeah, it, it's just, and it took me the first time I heard it. I was like, yeah. what? cause we're not, and look at how odd that is that we never hear. Like people are so caught off guard, like as if, you know what, and this is probably a moment in time where, you know, there is the global reckoning of racism against Black people in these United States. So that's a conversation about that, about just how we're not even used to um, people saying, uh, not receiving gorgeous and greatness, um, or, or you're used to just your honey or your hubby saying it. Right. Like, I love when men say beautiful. If men say hello, beautiful. Yeah. It's, well, it's just melts my, I, I just, I'm just a sucker for, I, yeah. Anyway, so. I said that. So women, cause women get offended when men say hello, beautiful. Like, I'm glad you said that. That lights me up. I receive it. So you have to be open and receive it. And I'm not reading anything else to, I mean, certainly if it's your honey and certainly if it's not anybody else's, but even if it's a, just a casual in passing, I, hello, beautiful. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Hey. In fact, I'm gonna break my natural response is just smile. It's gonna be all cheese and just that, you know, that's nice. And so, but for women, how we're not used to um just hearing gorgeous and greatness and beautiful, what's up with that? Like, okay, why can't we just receive that? Um, I was gonna share one other thing. I know, I think. I think the other part of this hello, gorgeous, 
than greatness. It also um, is more about I see you. And that is because I've had a lot of stages and I would walk in and there's there's a lot going on and she's the speaker. And then somebody else is sitting in the seat. And so when I say hello, gorgeous, that means I see you. And like make, just loving on people from afar and not like creating distance that I'm up here and you're down there. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. Let's just stay low. Let's stay humble. Stay gracious. Always stay gracious. Ooh. Best revenge is your paper. Okay. And hmm. so, so part of it was that like, like people knowing that there is a woman standing off to the side and you have a platform and a microphone. Don't you dare walk by and not so into her life. Hmm. I love it. Just drop it. Just write. Why? Because it's not about other people. Guess what? Because there's a third party watching my walk. Do you hear me? And I want to make sure I don't fall out of his good graces. Because baby, I like when he blesses me and when he takes care of me and he kept me. Listen, he kept, kept, kept us. Yeah. I'm, a kept, I'm a kept woman. Hmm. I'm a kept woman. And then I'm a blessed woman on top of that. Do you hear? And so that last part of hello, gorgeous and great, is just that I see you, whether you're the security, whether you're cleaning this, this, uh, let, let me tell you something, whether you clean the toilets, if I walk into anybody's restaurant and there's an attendant, uh, this, uh, this, uh, attendant in the, in, in the bathroom, you know, a lot of high end places. Well, actually it used to be, it used to be, we're going to keep this straight 100. It used to be, you know, when I was a young girl in the club. They would have that the little woman off to the side, yep. okay. And then there was a break, and I didn't see the little woman off to the side. So now we're gonna talk about the come up. So now in high end places, there's there's always an attendant. She want to hand you the towel, the co- you know the cotton towel, not a paper towel. And so hello, gorgeous. So whether you are here, or whether you're driving the Uber, or whether you're driving this luxury, you know this private, it's gorgeous and yeah. great. And sir. And Mr. In fact, sir. In fact, now I have a huge appreciation to call men Mr. Mr. George Floyd. Yep, we're gonna respect their name. We're gonna say Mr. Yes. Mr. So, sir. And yep, and I see you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So And you teach spiritual growth and personal development, which was really um what changed my life. Because when I like I said at the beginning, when I came to you, I was I didn't I was very personally undeveloped. And I didn't know I was in a toxic relationship. I wasn't looking for a relationship coach because I just thought that dysfunction and and being in a toxic relationship was normal. I just knew that I was lost in life. So going through, why is spiritual growth and personal development so important to um, get to levels of success where a lot of people are not because they skip these steps? Yeah, so why is it important? It's important, I think, because it's the missing element and it's the um it's the formula so i always um share this formula of the one plus one equals two which is one plus one um equals success and so success as a woman success as a mom success as a wife success as a leader as a businesswoman as an employee um that's the one plus one plus one equals two so two is a success and the formula of uh, the first one is spiritual growth, right? Knowing uh, this is important because the first work that we are to do is to find out who we are and why we're here. Hmm. And in order to do that, you have to ask God. And this is for the people who are believers right now. If you, if you ascribe to some other faith, you know, I sometimes say, I don't know what to tell you, but I do. It's just go back to your faith and what you believe, and it should be able to resolve that for you, right? So, yeah. And if it doesn't, come try my faith. So okay. that's why I always say, okay, you here's where if you believe something else, you know, that's your choice. And so fill in the gaps for what I'm saying is my faith resolves for me and fills in the gaps and justifies why I'm here and why I should hang on and not lose my mind and go crazy because my faith answers a question. Now, why am I here? And cause this is crazy where we are right now. So look, so tell me why am I here now? And, and 
Why I'm here? What am I supposed to do? What is the meaning of life? God, I just need you to answer some questions for me because I'm, this, I'm here on September 11th and there was a terrorist attack here. So Lord, I'm going to need you to say something. Yes. Okay. And then here we are 10 years, 20 years late, right? Or uh, just about Lord, everything shut down. Lord, wait now what? I'm going to need you to answer something for me because I don't I don't have answers. Not my all my degrees and education and access and mentors. No, this not for, nobody can answer this. This is you, Lord. And so it's important for you to be successful to anchor in what you believe and anchor in faith. You never want to leave faith without uh, out of your success equation. And so some people don't have they're not anchored. And so if you're not anchored in faith, then when you go to your job and you're trying to do this business and you're trying to do it without God. It's a lot of work and it's hard. And, you know, you need, you need God at the, at, you know, to open some doors, to come to the negotiating table. Like, so it's important for success that you anchor in faith. So you have something for which you can believe in and stand on if you can't trust and believe in anything else. So you need it to anchor you. And that's how you're going to to show up more um, solid and able to run your race. Mm -hmm. So that's why the spiritual piece is, is important, right? And then the personal development piece is important because a lot of errors and mistakes that we make, I've made them, we've all made them, they are mistakes because we didn't have um, self-awareness, uh, which, you know, everybody's, we, we all, we're all always working on that. I'm always working on my awareness. Like, Lord, did I say the right thing? Did I, oh Lord, I don't think I said that right. I don't think that came out. You know, I'm always, was I listening? And so that personal growth is where there's a lot of errors. I'm going to tell you where there's a lot of errors. There's a lot of errors in sensitivities. Like, you know, when people are sensitive, just for no reason, because they haven't done their personal work. They don't know who they are. So they're dealing with the self-esteem issues. So that's that's personal growth and development. That's personal growth. Um, in relationships, it shows up. Okay, so you mad at him for this, that, and the other, when really this neediness and this insecurity and this, you know, stalking and like, it, it's just because there's some, um, res no, no, that's personal, personal growth and development. No, if you just work on this part of you knowing who you are and work on your self-esteem and work on communication skills, work on your listening skills, that's all in that personal growth and development, yes. right? Make work on your leadership skills. Cause if you work on your leadership skills as a personal development, you'll better know how to follow him, follow yeah. your dude, right? Cause leaders know how to fight, right? So should, if you do the full work. You shouldn't just be able to lead when you're in charge. You should be able to lead when other people are in charge. What? That's a real leader. If you can only lead when you're in charge, then I don't know. It's debatable. And there's levels of leadership. Uh-oh. We're not okay, yeah. going levels of leadership. Yeah, there's levels of leadership. So all of this is personal growth, whether it's listening, communication skills, um, you know, uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, my God. There's just so much. There's just so much. And, and so I'll talk about, again, why is this important for success? It's important for us to develop ourselves because you, if when we have not developed ourselves, then how we lead in other people? You can't lead other people if you can't even lead yourself. So that's why it's personal mastery. Like you master yourself first and then on whatever job, business, even your household, master yourself and you'll be able to then lead other people, right? And so, so much, yeah. So I always say, when I when I came into coaching with you, it was a lot of me. He did this, and she did that. They did this, they did that. And you just said to me, "I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you." So talk about self accountability. Self accountability. So I'm going to tell you something, and just to keep this real. Um, self-accountability is so important. And I'm going to tell you how I learned self-accountability. I'll tell y'all my messy story. Is this, so we're live on Facebook. I'll tell y'all my messy story. So I worked in corporate America on Wall Street, um, like when I was very, very, very young. And I had some really um, early successes, but then I had one big failure and it was so bad. And that work qualified me to do this, by the way. And it was, I was favored in a team on a team in um super conservative white male dominated uh fortune 500 company 
And um, my manager was a black woman and I loved her. She was my mentor. I loved her. I was a ride or die for her. Well, anyway, she went out on leave. Something happened. Ish hit the fan during the time there was a corporate restructure. Well, then they brought in a new manager and the new manager was a young black woman. Well, guess what? I was the favored person on the team. I was the most senior person on the team. And in fact, so much so that when new people would come, my white male counterparts, in fact, there was a manager at the time, a senior VP, his name was Lenny. He would introduce people to me. He would come over. He would say, just follow her, do what she do. (laughs) Guess what he would say? Okay, well, here's what happened when the new manager comes. No, I'll step back. He also said during the restructure, he called me into his office and we had all of like a 60 second, like a two minute meeting. It was the most powerful thing because there was so much lesson and so much of God in that conversation. He just said, now pandemonium is breaking out in terms of restructure, but he said, um, he said, sit tight. I'm, I'm going to take care of you. And that was, that was the end of the meeting. And what it meant was there was restructuring and a lot of movement. He called me in just to reassure me. Tell me that wasn't a God week yes. of when God says, sit tight. I got you. That's it. That's all you need to know. I could preach. I'm not the preacher, but I could preach right from here. But let's put this in the parking lot. We'll come back another day on that. But let me just so let me finish the story. So then I'm going to come back to the manager after that. I was I was just messy. I was the most vocal person on the team who was both for and against the new manager. And that's what I learned. You cannot be for and against. You could be for me or you could be against me, but you cannot be both. You cannot be both. You could be against me. That's cool. I might not be your flavor. That's fine. But you can't be both. And so it just went, it just went real wrong because of course I I was probably salty that my mentor and manager, she lost her job or she had to take an early retirement and she was really super amazing. And then the new manager. And so it was Mm self-sabotage and I'm leading to this accountability. I'm leading to this accountability and how I learned so much at that job. It was Merrill Lynch at the time. And I spent a lot of my years there. What I learned in that in self-reflection. So everything went downhill after that. Like, nope. Cause you, cause I was the most vocal and I was for, and again, they didn't say that, but I realized in my own personal work, that's what, that's what happened. And I forgot what the guy told me, like, I'm going to take care of you. Right. But I was young, it, but let me tell you something, it qualified me to do this work. So anyway, it was very painful. Let me get to the accountability. What I learned from that is always to ask the question. What role did you play, D. Marshall? What mm. in this fallout, in this, this relationship, in this firing, in this fight, in this conflict? The first question is a question to yourself. Mm. What role did you play? Because this is not about what she did and what happened with this manager. That, that we're not talking about that. No. What did you? What was your role? Because you, you, you are not qualified to ask and challenge other people about what they did until you have asked yourself the question, but what was your role? Because you just want to make sure you're free and clear. Right. You want to make sure, like, I'm good. Did I check in with myself about, and identify, here's the mistake. Here's, here's I, I was wrong, right? And so that is the accountability baseline, is always to check in with yourself. What role did I play and what role am I playing in this? How am I showing up? What am I doing? I'm not allowed to ask just yet. Now I'll get to that, but accountability is about yourself. You don't have permission. You don't, you're not authorized to check other people. You're not authorized to check other people until we check ourselves. And until like, here's what I love about your platform you're authorized, qualified, verified, certified in the space that you hold. Why? Because you did your work. Yes. And you have, like, n- nobody would even ever be able to do what you do. Be- First of all, because God gave you a unique um, story struggle thing 
and said, and now daughter, let's see what you're going to do with this. Cause I really have work for you. Right. right? In fact, that's how, that's why it happened. So the infinite, everything that happened in your life was to get you to the place of healing people right now. So you were qualified. So, um, so accountability, I always say it's about holding yourself accountable as your first work in every day, every day, every yeah. day. If my, if my situation is a mess, my house is a mess, my, if my schedule is overwhelmed, okay, well, yep, yeah, don't, don't be mad at the other people. Don't, don't be mad. Don't, right. don't do that. I love, because I'm telling you, you got me all the way straight, because every time I get ready to blame something on somebody, or I feel like I'm trying to make them feel, look bad, or, or plead my case, I always think about you that, no, 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 Trey, I'm not talking about them, I'm talking about you, and I was just like, but, the, no, I'm gonna need you to take this time, and we gonna get off this line, until you can digest, I'm, you keep saying them, they, her, your mother, your father. Your, I, no, I'm not talking about them, Trey. Talk, when you're ready to talk about you, we're going to have another session. Because, you know, and you said another thing. I don't have to keep clients. Oh, wow. That is so okay. mean, D. Marshall. Oh, my God, I said not, that. That's not nice. Because you said, I don't, I don't want to waste your time, and I don't want to waste my time. So when you're ready to talk about you, and that got me to a point of she's right. Everything in my life is based on the decisions that I'm making and how I'm allowing people to treat me and how long I'm staying. So yep. you said something on your website. It says, what does DC Marshall do? And you said, I empower women. I empower women to be who they were, who they were born to be rather than who they are pretending to be right now. I yes. About a false read. Okay. So you know what, but wait, can I, okay. Yes. I know you want to get to that piece. Can I respond though? You said something. I want to share two quick things before um, that piece. So um, that moment about you and or how it is that I challenge you to come back, come back. It was for two reasons. Do you? Re and I know you'll remember this. Remember, on occasion, I have said to folks, to people, to women, if you're uncomfortable right now with whatever it is I'm sharing, um, that's a good thing. Yeah. Because that means that you don't have anybody in your life who's stretching you and stretching increases capacity. Yeah. So I'm doing, so God is using me to do you a favor to stretch you because you don't have anybody in your life who's going to stretch you and stretching increases you. And so if you don't have anybody stretching you or challenging you to make you uncomfortable, then they're keeping you small. And I used to tiptoe gently around it. And then I said, listen, my mentors and leaders stretch me. Like, you know, you hear me talk about Dr. Stories. It was always a, a cut. We would always choke around. But the stretching, but stretching is how I got here. And so where I used to be maybe timid about stretching women a little bit, a little bit, but I was always this woman, I would then fully step in it when I realized, nope, you know what? I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't give you what I had, because when other people are trying to figure out, well, how do I speak around the globe? How do I write this book? How do I start this ministry? If I give you something other than um, a path that was not my way, then it's not going to be the formula. The formula I know is you need mentors. Here's what I learned. Volunteer always. I always volunteered. I always gave and served, but I always had the mentor that would stretch me and pull me up. And so I'm uncomfortable. And yeah. that's how you grow. Stretching increases capacity for more. Hmm. And so you don't want anybody to keep you small. So that was one reason I would say, this is not about them. This is about you. Because I knew I was here for the 2025 or the 2020 version of you, yeah. not the one that was still back there talking about other people. Because yeah. you're talking about other people when God has work for you to do. And now when we got on here, you said, no, you moderating panels like every two, three and four paddle panels and not just moderating panels. You are being used as a mouthpiece, right? Yeah. And doing work and serving. And so anyway, so that's the one thing I wanted to share. The second is about that thing about you telling the story of other people. Here, here's a lesson. Um, there's a, a book, it's called, If Life is a Game, These are the Rules. It's the 10 Rules for Living. One of the rules in the book that really changed my life is about um, what you make of your life is up to you. And it talks about successful people and unsuccessful people and how unsuccessful people will always tell a story about why they are not successful. They'll say, 
oh, my mother was, um, you know, my mother was abusive. My father was an addict. Um, I was in 10 and three, uh, 10 and, you know, homeless um, shelters, or I was a foster child. I was, I was abused. I didn't, didn't have this. I didn't have that. And so on and so forth. So people who are unsuccessful tend to share um, their, their story, sort of their story their, or their, their past um, as an, sometimes an excuse mm. as for why they are not taking responsibility. So they bring up their characters into the story. This is, it's called rule number eight. And I teach on rule number eight. And, and so the lesson is this, while that may have, have happened. So if anybody is watching now that may have happened and I'm so, you know, my heart goes out to um, you, if that's your story, if you were ra ra raped or, or a product of rape or a product of molestation, while that may have been your past, rule number eight says what you make of your life is up to you. Hmm. And so I'm connecting the dots from you and talking about other people or at least, but they and this note, let's come back to you because it was. But Trey, what you make up your make of your life is up to you. So that was the reason why. So that said, I'll come back to your, your question. Um, right. I empower women to be who they were called to be, who be who to be who they were created to be. You know, and the reason um, I say that is because I think so many of us are and, and are lost in not knowing who we are. Mm -hmm. I was that woman being a surface level, surface dweller up oh. until when I was working on Wall Street and I heard these words of authentic self and like, find your authentic self. I was like, well, who, who am I now? <laughs> like, I'm like, well, wait, <laughs> I, I don't understand the question. Like, who authentic self? Well, who am I? <laughs> and so, yeah, like, wait, time out. Authentic self. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? And so it sent me on a journey of finding my authentic self. And what I realized is, you know, you have to be able to answer this question, who am I removed from everything external? That's part of finding your authentic self. But what I also realized is a lot of us don't know who we are. And the false, when I say false read, it's, it's, in, it's now called in corporate America, imposter syndrome. You're showing up as somebody who you are not. Yes. And it's just because you've not been, you, you may not have the awareness and you may not have been taught like, or introduced to, now, you know, you don't know what you're talking, you, you don't, you, you, you don't know who you are. You, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't say it just like that, but again, I would ask the question, who are you removed from everything external? Who are you removed from this house and that car? Because you're real fabulous right now on Instagram with this bag and those shoes and, and this listen, house and listen, this relationship. Now people are being detached from these things because of COVID. They're being detached from their label at their job. They're being detached from being able to pay their bills. They're being detached from being able to buy that pocketbook and those shoes. So talk to those people right now who are being detached from everything that they've known and now they're in their house like, who am I? I yes. have my job. They let me go. That's right. That's right. That's right. So this is the opportunity and the need right now for you to find out who you are. In fact, you are going to ask yourself the question, who am I now removed from everything external? Because my bag does not make me, my job does not make me my car does not make me, of course, because now it's all null and void. It's temporal. And so who am I removed from my association? Because you're not your association. You're not your friend. You're not that affiliation. You're not that network. That's not who you are. And so the work, I would just say this is an opportunity and it's, um, it's going to be a defining moment. So for yeah. the person who your entire life was just caught up in external and things and stuff, and you now realize they have no meaning. Um, and they have no value. They have no value. I don't care how much you spent on that Chanel bag. That is not an asset. That is not, right, it depreciates. No, that's not. That's not. I don't care what kind of car you drive. That's not an asset. No, 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 no. I don't care. Like, so this is an opportunity. And I would say for the person who is watching, I am believing for you to come out on the other side, having done your work, 
to answer the question, who am I? And to let go of everything you're clinging to um, that is not yours, that you don't own, that is that is depreciating in value. So I would say, and, and it's doable. It's doable because it's doable. Know that that's just the necessary work we do in life. What you don't want to be is a, just a false read and just an imposter and looking as if you are someone that you are not or pretending to be. Why? Because you have to go home with yourself and you know who you are on the back end, uh, you know, uh, crying at late at night when you're just empty inside. It's, it's so much better on the other side to know who you are. You know why? Because then you're not going to be moved by, by people. You're not going to be moved by, you know, the shift of the wind. You're not going to be um, so sensitive to, you know, things that are coming up and showing up in your, in your day to day. You'll be solid. You'll be solid in so many ways and not questioning and doubting um, in, in some instances. So it is so much better to just know who you are and to really do the work of, do I love myself? Do I like myself? Do I love myself? Early on when I started my journey, I, t- I started turning off the television for the first time. Like, so I could hear my thoughts and see if I like myself. I started going out when I was young, like 20 and late twenties. Um, t- t- I remember the first time I went to a restaurant by myself and it felt awkward. Right. That's for young girls here. Right. Cause you know, you used to be in and you feel, no, but begin to let go um, so you can build up to something solid and sustainable and durable and, uh, you know, long suffering, unwavering, solid. So whether I have plenty or whether I am in lack, I am solid on who I am. I'm solid. And I love I'm that. solid. And I just encourage other people. I just really want other women to be solid. And know without a shadow of doubt, because life is so much more amazing. Like, ooh. I love when you said you went to the restaurant by yourself and it was uncomfortable for the first time. And we talked about that before. You were like, you need to go some places by yourself. And I'm like, people don't look at me like I'm crazy. Like, you said, why are you so worried about what people thinking? And that that's one of the problems I think that we, you don't, sometimes you don't know the stuff that you be saying. I don't, because I was like, oh, I. I said that. That was good. I can't. I'm like, what people going to think? Like, I'm at a restaurant by myself or at the movies by myself. Like, people going to think I couldn't get, I don't got no friends or I couldn't. you like, why you care about what people think about you? But that's when you're not, that's when you are a false read. Right, because you're in bondage. False. False read is bondage because you're having to keep up. You're worried. You're consumed about other people. Listen, I'll never forget. I went on a vacation by myself. I'm like, and I did it intentional. I remember. I remember. I planned my life how I wanted to remember it and how I wanted to tell the story. It was a milestone birthday. And I'll never forget on the day of my birthday, I scheduled the flight. I went to the Arizona Biltmore Spa because I know how I wanted to set up my life. And what I wasn't going to do is wait for a boyfriend or a man. In fact, it was probably after a breakup because I'm knew it was intentional and I wanted to reset. I didn't want him to have anything over me that the best that I had was the best from him. No, the best that I had, yes. Well, I, in fact, it was on my birthday and I planned it. And I remember I had an all white linen because I created this image of myself of, yup, a successful black woman and I'm going on vacation. This is what we do. And so we book flights. I was booking flights before I was even speaking. I booked a flight by myself. I went to the Arizona Biltmore and I think I spent four or five days in Arizona. I remember when I got there, I had a massage on the day of uh, a couple days. But when I got there on my birthday, I remember I hung out by the pool. And then when it was dinner time, guess what? I had dinner at the hotel and a bottle of champagne by myself, went back to my hotel room and thank God for all of this. And, and I so I planted to be this woman. I planted. I that was the ex- exercise. So for everybody who's watching right now, and can I tell you a little secret? I went away this past weekend by myself. Now, listen, now I'm saving space for my honey. So be clear. Yeah. Oh, I have. But so I'll know how to act. So you can't just wait for honey to come. And then you have not learned how you're going to be getting your life. You don't have no boundaries. And you're just talking to people on the phone. Nine o'clock. In the, no, we got space for family time. I have space. I have carve outs. Yep. His, he's on, on. Well, you can't say he's on the schedule because he don't want to hear that. But yeah, we have blockout time. 
But but my point is, I went away this past weekend. Why? I wanted to quarantine someplace else. Why else? Because in my business, um, we have breakout blocks, which are three hour uh, blocks of time once a week during the week where I have to do something to elevate my wealth set and my mindset. And it has to be during the work time. It has to be between nine and five during the work day. So I said, well, I'm going to book a trip. And sure enough, I did a drive trip. I went to uh, I went to the mountain hmm. by myself, by myself, by myself. And I had massage. So for all the women here, the test of you knowing who you are, you'll be able to answer the question, who are you removed from everything external? And you'll be able to take a trip and do things by yourself. You need to separate and you need a break from your babies, your grandbabies, your honey, your doggy. Why? You will come back better and restored. And so you'll come back loving a little bit, just a, be with the overflow, why will you have overflow to love on your babies and your honey and your hubby and your kitties and your, why will you have overflow? Cause I refill. So it's like, babe, Hey, I would like to see you when we get home. When I, cause I'm full. Cause I just had my time. That's how you show up. But when you're angry and upset and then snippety, you know, it's like, no, you, you, you need to, you need time. Okay. You need to get it together. Cause what you're not going to do is talk to the people in the household like this. You're not going to talk to them any kind of way. Cause you wouldn't talk to other people like that. And so my point is, we, I know we go. So my point is doing the work, doing the work and not want, not, you can't be a false read, but doing the work to find your authentic self. Some of the tangible um, outcomes of that, you will know according to the level of comfort and discomfort you have. So on a scale of one to 10, if I go to the movies or I go to a restaurant, am I, am I even aware that I'm by myself? I'm, that's a 10. I'm a 10. Cause I'm not even aware that I'm by myself. Now a one is I'm looking around to see who's looking at me or I'm pretending to be on the phone or something like something crazy or reading something. Right. And also that last thing about when I went to the restaurant the first time by myself, young girl that I was, I made up my mind that I wasn't going to wait for my friends to go or not go. And the reason being, I don't think, I think my one friend at the time, she might've been managing her dollars. Now she was managing her budget. And what I just, I just realized, like, I just don't want to live my life depending on like doing things if somebody else can, and if their money situation is together, I don't want to do that. Ooh, yes. I love this. We are at 1113 and I know that you have to go. go. It's a work day, Lord. Yeah, you, you work. Like, see, some people is pretending, but you are seriously working and I appreciate you. I appreciate your time so much. Um, I just want people to understand that I've learned that I'm comfortable in my space right now. I'm comfortable with who I am. Sure. I'm comfortable with what I do. I know my per I know who I am. Like this is like cake to me right now. Before I would be nervous because I didn't put in my ten thousand hours. Baby, and you have ten thousand plus. I was allowed to borrow your ten thousand hours. So I need people to understand that you need to get around people who have put in their ten thousand hours. I need you to be around people like my clients. They are so elated and so happy when they meet you because they all get to meet you. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're attached to greatness. My people are your people now because you've decided to invest in yourself. And so many people want things when they have no skin in the game. And uh -huh. I'm not privy to what D has if I haven't done the work myself. You don't get to take yeah. the fruit off my tree. Yeah. You haven't worked for it. I've been out in the field digging and, yes, and, and yes. you think that you're supposed to get and so I appreciate you allowing me to uh, allow me opportunities in my life for investing in myself I appreciate the women that you have connected me to oh. based on who you are and your integrity and your authenticity because I would never know these people I've come to events where people have walked up to me and I introduce myself and they say I say hi I'm Trey Mayors and Fortune 500 company. Yep. They say, oh, you're Trey. Oh, D speaks highly of you. And I'm like, uh, really? Like, not the mayor, but this is 
when you surround yourself with greatness and you invest in yourself. Nothing, nothing's free. And stop asking your friends for the hookup and the homeboy hookup and the family discount. Yeah. People have put in their hours. And I went to become a certified coach. Really, I got certified because I had a conversation with you one day. And I don't know if you remember it. And we had some time together. And I said, you know, women are coming to me asking me to coach them. And I don't ever want to disrespect you as a coach the practice of coaching i don't know what to do and i don't want to and you said first of all i need you to be responsible with the gift with the people that god assigned to you yep second of all you said what would make you feel comfortable coaching these women because god has sent them to you and i said if i was certified so you said this is what you're going to do you're going to look up three coaching companies that are accredited and you're going to pick three and you're going to research them and you're going to go and get certified so that you can serve God the way that you're supposed to. So I appreciate your guidance and your leadership. And I want you to tell people what's next for you and where they can find you. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. And I'm telling you, you really, um, there in so many ways, um, are like um, a big win for, for me in terms of the work that God assigned me to. Um, because like you just received everything everything and you just show up just such as an integrous woman and a woman of excellence, always just transparent, real, doing great work. Um, nobody is perfect, so we're not perfect, but you're always in the work. And, and the fact that you follow through all the way to the end to do the certification um, and then launching all of your brands and your work and an advocate for men, uh, for women and for black men, so I just, I just appreciate you. So what's next for me? You know, I'm doing, um, I'm super busy in the company that I run, Diverse and Engage. Yeah. So, um, and we're doing a lot of stuff like in diversity. So that was only a third of our business. Like one part was coaching, one part leadership development, one part diversity. And so we have a lot more business in diversity. Um, but I am working on a couple a few projects, and I'll just say for everybody here, you can you can uh, go to my website uh, www.dcmarshall.com. If you just opt into the D list, you'll uh, you know you can stay connected. Um, but I'm working on a project for Black women business owners. So I'm working on that. I'm doing a lot with Black women business owners. It's really part of diverse and engaged. So I usually don't talk too much about it because it's in a um, in a really specific way with with the clients that I work with. Um, we're getting ready for, to figure out like DNI honors where Congress meets culture, inclusion, and belonging. That was a live initiative, but now we're figuring out, you know, um, how to go virtual and then the coaching school. Um, so faith-based coach certification, um, school, which is an ICF certified program. Actually, we are getting ready to launch enrollment for our first cohort. And so, yes, we are launching enrollment for our first cohort. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Um, in fact, we had one setback in that we were planning to have the launch in June because we were doing a live in July on the mountain for the first cohort. So there's a live in um, in person piece, but with COVID just got right. slightly delayed. So, um, so yeah, so for those of you who are, uh, aspiring coaches, or if you are a coach and you want to um, learn how to become a faith-based coach, and when I say faith, I mean Christ-centered, yes. uh, then you should definitely go to, let me see what happens if you go to faith-based. I think if you just go to dcmarshall.com um, and add your name to the list, um, you could go to, let me just say the website. The website is FB. Let me just see. I can give y'all the website or Trey. You know what? I'll share it with you, Trey, and you can share it with your community. Okay. But it's called Faith Based Coach um, Certification. It is an ICF certified program, and again, to um, to teach you um, and to show you how to again become a faith based. So a lot of what I shared is really embedded into the coach certification program. Like it's the blueprint for how do you do that and do it responsibly. So yeah. people say, how did you get here? Or how did, how is it that you, you know, you do business with all of these, um, you know, fortune 500 companies, you take over corporate spaces and you speak around the globe. I, in that, uh, uh, program, I literally lay everything in it 
from the spiritual growth to the personal development. So anyway, so that's what's next for me. If you are interested and you want to be in cohort one, we don't have, it's not a huge group because it's a, it's a course, it's an ongoing program um, or not an ongoing program. It is a, um, a specific program for the first cohort. And so we only have, I think it's only 12 people in the first cohort. And mm-hmm. so if you're interested, go to D. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to be, I mean, you, you have to do coaching. I mean, you know, it's serious. So it's not like, it's not like training. Like you have to, you know, you have to be able to, um, you know, there's a component in there. You have to coach, right. You have to record. I have to hear transcripts. Like I have to, like, this is a serious piece, mm-hmm. uh, not like locker room, locker room mentorship is something different, but the coach certification. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to show up. You got to show up for that. So anyway. And it's co-ed. It's co-ed. A lot of my stuff is for uh, people believe is just for women, but the um, the coaching program is for it's co-ed. So I gotta run, gorgeous. This is a work day for me, but I feel like I feel like this is a Saturday, like this conversation. But now I gotta go. I gotta go do more work. But I am so grateful to be here with you. I love you, Trey. I I love you. I promise you. You you just like. So that's why when you ask me, oh, when you ask me stuff, what do I say when you ask me things? Only I always, what, what is my response? I always say, of course, whatever it is, of you, course. Yes. And I'm like, you are my Oprah. And I just want to say like, that of like, course. I, I just am honored to have you here because you totally pivoted my life. And, and this is another thing about you. And I want the whole world to know this is another thing about the why I know that this woman is connected to God in her core, by her roots, because Dee is always one step ahead of the crowd. And I'm always asking myself, I hear people saying diversity. I'm like, and I'm not saying that nobody else has been doing diversity, but I'm thinking about two, three years ago. And I'm like, Dee Ben said that. And I hear the word pivot so much. And I'm like, Dee has been pivoting for five years. But I'm just like, and then I hear about politics and all of this stuff and, and black men and, and, and all of this stuff coming to fruition now, like five years, four years later. I'm like, how does she know that? But I know from, look, like I said, eavesdropping on your conversations with God in the morning, I know it's coming straight from the source because yeah. I, I'm like, she's been ahead of this, like. I just be wanting to be in your brain because I then I can know what's coming next because I'm oh, like I love it and it's, it's like they late and I'm not knocking anybody for what they're yeah. you know because you have to have a, a somebody to emulate there's always yeah. an innovator and somebody yeah. does it first and I'm just proud that my coach does it first you know I know you do because you always keep track and I love it um, you know what Fifty Cent says like in that regard like there's always somebody to go first Oprah him. And Oprah had a conversation and I love how he framed like, like him and, and, um, and Jay-Z. He said it was something, his response was, no, I, I like Jay because Jay gives me something to track to. Right. And in other words, you, you, you could have some, it's almost like a benchmark, if you will. And right. so, oh, wait, Steph, the bosses are calling me, telling me I need to go. So, okay. all right. So, I, so but any, but I, no, but I, la, no, I promise you, I have to say this one thing. Yeah, I yeah. think it's God using you when you say you watch on social. I'm going to tell you why. Did you notice I took a pause from social at the beginning yeah. of the year and I'm not as consistent? Because I'm like, you know what? I, that's I'm done. I'm complete. And I'm going to reroute this time and these hours. I don't have to post everything. But what I realize is, People do look for hope on my page. Yes. And so thank you for that. I'm I'm going I'm gonna get better because I I, I like that. I like that. We and so now I know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Be the right eavesdropping on my con- eavesdropping on my on these conversations with God because okay. I'm eavesdropping every morning when you post. I love it. Books. Babe. I read the whole thing. I'm like, let me see what she asking God for today. Well, let me see what she, how she asking God to shift her. Cause sometimes I don't know in the morning. You don't even understand. I'm going to share. I'll share offline. You don't even understand. Cause I'm reading another book. I don't even transfer it on. Um, I'll post more. I can't even tell. Even like, even yesterday, just how God shows up based on the specific word yesterday morning. And that's happened like over the last week, at 
least three or four times. The specific word, I jump up, I implement that specific word. And all right, I got to go. Love you, uh, gorgeous. And I love coffee with tea. I'll yes. see you again. All righty. Bye. 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 Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember what I tell you at the end of all my broadcasts? You deserve the best. Yes, I'm talking to you. You deserve the best. Now go get it. Peace and blessings.